look into a one night. The Lady Titans are coming home champs as they raise the trophy here in Washington, Pennsylvania. What a day for Westminster Athletics. A year ago this weekend, the Titan men were conference champs. Back in 30 seconds. Because Coach Scott gets dumped with her on his Gatorade or water. Now she's getting hosed down. That's going to lead to a bad hair day. The Lady Titans celebrate on WJ's court as they beat the number one seed president to get 20 wins on the season. And more importantly, the 2005 President's Athletic Conference Championship. So that was Sebastian uh, Salazar calling that game, and uh, it just every time I hear that, it gives me goosebumps. And uh, I was listening to the one on Dickinson too, and it was giving me goosebumps. And uh, as Coach Scott just said, now now she finally knows who uh, ruined her hair day, dunked her. So I guess uh, Desiree might be wearing some extra laps here today uh, for practice. But uh, that was a very talented squad you had. You had Mary Jane Eaton, you had Erica Tallow. Uh, I mean, it was Allison Gasper. What would you say is the difference between last year's squad between this year's squad? I think the big difference right now with um, this year's squad is the inexperience. Um, last year's squad, we um, they came back with from their junior to, to senior year. We had a lot of experience, game experience. But with this squad, um, we're kind of missing that game experience that we have, and um, that's right now we're going through some growing pains with being with the young team, and and we're trying to get through that right now. Yeah, you're definitely a, a young team. No seniors on the team at all, mm -mm. and uh, five freshmen coming in. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about some of the freshmen? Um, some of the freshmen coming in are adjusting to the to the style of college basketball, getting used to the shot clock. Um, they are working hard, trying to make um, make this team better, and, and just get, learning the different style. Coming from um, different high school programs, every high school do does different things. So coming in and getting that more up t up tempo kind of style, they're adjusting to it, and hopefully some of them will step it up here for us. Um, you also mentioned at the PAC media day that we went to uh, earlier in the uh, year that practice was running. Uh, pretty slow. Uh, would you say that that's not because, because you don't have any seniors on the team or what would you say the reason for that is? I think it came with not having um, any seniors but also we have we had a lot of injuries at the beginning. It was um, everyone was so in and out. We had a lot of people. We Sometimes we only practiced with nine to ten people so that's why us moving ahead at the beginning of the year was kind of slow for us okay. um, at practice because we didn't have who we um, and we need it in there for to practice. So, have you? Would you say that uh, you've actually progressed since then? Yeah, oh yeah. I would say that, you know we're kind of getting back into the swing of things. Um, we just found out Maria is going to be back with us here shortly. Okay. Um, she will start getting into practice at least ten days here. So we're looking to for have her come back, and that'll help with. Um, with us, so yeah, we're kind of getting back in the swing of things with everybody. So, and you were just saying about uh, the the injuries. Is that she pretty much the only injury that you have left on your team? That's yes, from the uh, yes, okay. as of right now. Uh, now your last game was against on Wednesday against Mount Union. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, it was a loss. But uh, if you look at the video that we have here, you might see a, a familiar face uh, from this game. If we can take a look at that now. And uh, one of your former players there, one of your key uh, senior starters from last year that graduated, Erica Tallow, mm -hmm. uh, had a, a, a tremendous year. Uh, now she was uh, coaching against you uh, last, last night, uh, Mount Union. Uh, how how uh, does it feel to coach, be coaching against one of your uh, former players? Um, I think, I mean, it's, it's always kind of fun. I remember going back as, as a former player coaching against my team, um, having mixed emotions about it. But um, it's, it's fun even having MJ on the sideline as a coach, too, and, and having them back. Um, it was, it, it's always fun. Okay. Now, uh, do you think she has any advantages on you at all since, you know, she just played for you last year? She knows your style. <laughs> uh, do you think it has anything to do with the, the, the loss? Um, I don't think it had anything to do with the loss, but I'm sure um, she had some, some input on some of the game plans. Obviously, the big thing, I'm sure sh she knew the personnel-wise, um, the players individually um, coming from, from the team. So, And I'm sure she um, some of the plays that we run are still the same. So, But um, I don't think that was the, the major big advantage you know, in the game, but I'm sure it helped them out a little bit. Now, uh, what would you say then would be, uh, in your opinion, uh, why you guys lost last night? I think yesterday um, it was we we fought well defensively. We played a great game. Um, offensively, we're not yet gelling. Um, we're not. We don't have any chemistry as a team yet on the offensive end. And um, and shooting 22 percent really didn't can't win any we games. Help, yeah. So um, we held them to 54 points. What was a, a good thing for us, but. We have to be able to put the ball in the basket, and that's what we're not doing. Would you say that's the one thing maybe your team has to work on the most is uh, your shooting abilities, the offense, or 
I think shooting and I think just working together chemistry wise and that again that comes with um, them just getting to know each other having people back in and, and, and within the cycle and the freshmen coming in and getting to know each other and and where they're going to be and um, the, the team chemistry right now is what we're what we need to to work on, yeah. All right, well, thanks a lot for being on the show. I truly appreciate it. The next game will be on Friday at 6 o'clock against Manchester, and then they have another one on Saturday. Uh, Lady Titans will host Case, uh, Case Western Reserve excuse me, at 3 p.m. So uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back with Steve Brink's Pack Report. Hey, girls, at 3 o'clock. What is he looking at? Oh, don't. so obvious. Captain Obvious has scored again. Open your window, say something. Oh, he's really gonna do. Hi. Hi. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Honey, finish up. Come on, we gotta go. Ew. What's wrong? Something's on my Let's glass. See. Ew. Oh, it's lipstick. Excuse me, ma'am. Could we just have a new glass, please? This one's dirty. Thank you. Mom. I don't want you to get sick. I don't know what's on that glass. Oh, hand me one, too. Hey, you want a sip of beer? Yeah. There you go. There's some honey right here, too. Picture yourself at Westminster College. Westminster offers an educational experience that is second to none. We've been exceeding students' expectations for 150 years. Westminster combines the prestige of a national liberal arts college with the personal attention you deserve. Westminster is a national leader in graduation rate performance and is the most affordable national liberal arts college in Pennsylvania. Visit Westminster's beautiful 300-acre campus to experience an ideal learning environment. Succeed at Westminster College. Welcome back to Coach's Corner, everyone. I'm Steve Brink, and I'm here to bring you the first basketball edition of the Pack Report here in the 2005-2006 season. We're going to get things started by taking a look at the overall standings on the men's side. The standings include up to Tuesday night's games, and so far it's been a weird start to the season as no Pack school on the men's side is above the 500 mark. Pack preseason favorite Bethany is on top of the standings at 3-3. Three and three. Waynesburg is at 2-2, two and two, and everyone else is below the 500 mark. Westminster is the only other pack school with a win as the Titans are in third at 1-4, followed by Grove City, Teal, and Washington and Jefferson, who are all 0-3. And, and then finally, the newcomer of the pack, Thomas Moore, is in last at 0-4. Well, now we're going to take a look at what happened around the pack over the holiday weekend, and we're going to start with the Teal Tomcats. Teal only had one game last week as they traveled to Division II Indiana University last Monday and lost by a score of 112-61. to 61. Sophomore Joe Herman led the Tomcats with 19 points and 10 rebounds in the loss. Next up, we have the Thomas Moore Saints. Thomas Moore played two games last week. The Saints lost in the opening round of the Emory & Henry Invitational last Saturday by a score of 150-110. to 110. Junior E.J. Haynes led the Saints with 26 points as he shot 12 of 14 from the field. Thomas Moore then turned right around playing again on Sunday as they lost the Constellation game of the Invitational to Methodist by a score 82 to 72. The defending pack champion Bethany Bison had a tough holiday week. Bethany went one and two, but both losses came by a combined five points. The Bethany Bison lost their first home game since February 2004 by a score of 112 to 109 against Mariana. And then on Saturday, the Bison won in the opening round of the Carnegie Mellon Invitational before falling in the championship game to the host Tartans by a score of 87 to 85. W&J lost their only game last week as they fell at home to Ohio Wesleyan losing 80 to 77. John Koch kept it close for the Presidents as he scored a career high 37 points in the loss. W&J had three free throw attempts in the final 12 seconds but couldn't get any of them to fall. Last Tuesday, Grove City traveled down to Penn State Altoona and lost 69-64 to fall to 0-3 on the year. Sophomore guard Ryan Gerber led the Wolverines with a career-high 19 points as he went 5-6 of six from beyond the arc. And finally, the Waynesburg Yellow Jackets fell to Frostburg State by a score of 79-64 last Tuesday. A 15-2 second-half run by the Bobcats proved to be the difference. Junior forward Jeff Nero had a team-high 19 points in the loss. Nero is averaging 19 points through three games this season. Well, now it's time to acknowledge the men's pack player of the week, and this week the honor goes to WJ's John Koch. The junior guard from New Kensington, PA, set career highs with 37 points and 12 rebounds in the president's 80-77 loss to Ohio Wesleyan. Koch was 14 of 20 from the field, while 30 of his 37 points came in the second half. 
Now, real quick, we're going to take a look at the scoring leaders on the men's side. These stats include up until last Sunday's games, and Westminster's Mark DeMonico leads the conference with 28.5 points per game. The Pack Player of the Week, John Koch, is in second with 24 a game. Not far behind is Bethany's Matt Drehos, and tied for fourth is Thomas Moore's EJ Haynes and Waynesburg's Bo Wilson with 21 points each. Coming up this week in the pack, only four teams are in action on the men's side. Waynesburg travels to Franciscan. Teal hosts Lancaster Bible. W&J hits the road to take on Division I West Virginia. Good luck in that one. And finally, Thomas Moore is on the road as well as the Saints travel to Transylvania. And now switching over to the women's side, we're going to get things started by taking a look at the overall standings. Again, these standings are as of Tuesday night's games. And when we look at the standings, we find the newest member of the pack, Thomas Moore, is on top at 4-1. W&J, the pack preseason favorite, is close behind at 3-1, followed by Waynesburg at 2-2. Then Grove City, Teal, and Bethany all with one win apiece. And finally, the defending pack champion Lady Titans are in last at 0-3. Now we're going to take a look at what happened around the pack last week on the women's side, and we'll start with the Bethany Bison. Bison lost all three games last week, falling to Kenyon 82-58 last Tuesday before dropping their opening round game and the Constellation game in the Wilmington tournament over the weekend. Senior Jenny Place matched her career high of 34 points in the opening round and posted a double-double with 17 points and 10 boards in the Constellation game as she was the lone Bethany player named to the all-tournament team. Grove City lost their only game last week as they dropped their home opener to visiting Mount Union, losing by a score of 69-48. Rachel McCoy led the Wolverines with 14 points in the loss. W&J posted a pair of wins last week as the Lady Presidents notched an 8-point win over Allegheny before Turkey Day and then traveled to Pitt Greensburg and won 93-80 after the holiday. Senior guard Lee Solkowski scored 27 points in Tuesday's win and 29 on Saturday against UPG. Teal went an even 1-1 one one last week as the Lady Tomcats lost to Denison 79-50 last Tuesday before getting their first win of the season by beating Carnegie Mellon 81-62 on Saturday. Freshman Amber Bodrick posted a double-double with 12 points and 10 boards in the loss to Denison, while adding another double-double with 18 points and 13 rebounds in the win over CMU. And the Lady Yellow Jackets won their only game last week as they defeated visiting Pitt Greensburg by a score of 78-68. Candace Ironman and Denise Kennedy led all scores in that game as both scored 17 points. Kennedy, a transfer from Pitt Greensburg, also grabbed seven rebounds against her former teammates. And finally, Thomas Moore won a perfect 3-0 last week. The Lady Saints beat Mount St. Joseph by 25 on Thanksgiving Eve, then won both games at the Julie Costello Memorial Classic over the weekend. Thomas Moore overcame a nine-point deficit and a nine-minute scoring drought to post the three-point victory in the final. Well, now it's time to acknowledge the Women's Pack Player of the Week, and for the second consecutive week, the award goes to W&J's Lee Solkowski. The senior guard from Upper St. Clair High School averaged 28 points, 9 rebounds, and 3 steals in the Lady President's two games last week. Solkowski also moved into third place on the school's all-time scoring list with 1,531 career points. Now, real quick, we're going to take a look at the scoring leaders on the women's side. These stats include up until last Sunday's games as well. And the WJ's Lee Solkowski is killing the competition, averaging almost 28 points per game, which is 10 points higher than Waynesburg's Candace Ironman, who comes in in second place with 17 points per game. Bethany's Jenny Place is in third, followed by Teal's Amber Bodrick and Grove City's Rachel McCoy, who's averaging just over 16 points per game, who comes in fifth. Six of the seven pack schools play multiple games this weekend. WJ is the only pack school that won't be playing at all. Teal and Waynesburg will both be competing in the Salisbury Optimist Classic. That does it for this week's edition of the Pack Report. Now let's kick it back to your host, Justin Egley. There's a better way to have fun with history. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. The Lawrence County Humane Society believes in the safety of spaying and neutering your animals. Spaying and neutering can have many long-term benefits. Uh, we at the Lawrence County Humane Society believe that all animals should be spayed or neutered. Uh, many, many reasons why, but uh, the biggest reason is that they will be a happier, healthier pet. Also, it alleviates the overpopulation problem. 
important. Getting your animals spayed and neutered is one huge step in making sure that more animals are healthy and find loving homes. I'm the best thing you ever had. Only think I'm guilty of it's giving you too much love. Making you, making you crazy, making you rap. There's a better way to have fun with history. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. And welcome back to Coach's Corner. Uh, this Now we have our Player of the Week. We have Craig Hannon with us here. Now Craig's a sophomore guard on the uh, Titan squad. And he's a local product from Newcastle and I believe Union High School, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Now, uh, rumors have it that you had a very, very successful uh, high school career. Uh, did you have any good uh, high school teams? Uh, we had one year, uh, my junior year, we actually made it. Uh, we won the WPL championship and uh, made it to the state finals, which we lost by about 11 points, I think it was. But we ran into a tough, uh, tough team out there. But we had a great junior year, and senior year we got upset in the first round of the uh, WPL playoffs, which was kind of upsetting. But you know, overall, it was still nice to get a gold medal around my neck before I left. Absolutely. Now, uh, I'm sure you never had to play an um-tempo um style like you do up here at Westminster. Uh, was that hard for you to adjust to when you came in, though? Uh, at Union, we didn't play as much of an up-tempo style, but we still like to push the ball and get out and run a little bit. Uh, the only difference was uh, we played a lot of half-court defense, which I don't like to sit down in a defensive stance. I like to get up and go, and that, that was a good part about coming here was uh, you know, being able to get up and press and make opponents uh, beat themselves, more okay. or less. All right. Well, uh, what would you say the hardest? That would be the hardest thing you'd say, probably then. Yeah, adjusting a little bit, not having to play as much half court defense and going full court. But uh, you know, on our offensive side, I did shoot a lot in high school, uh, okay. so you know, it was easy I, for me to come in and adjust. So it wasn't yeah, too I bad. Did, I did hear about that. <laughs> now, uh, I was going to. That's my next question. Actually, you consider yourself a strong three point maker uh, in high school? Oh yeah, definitely. I, that's uh, even my sophomore year when I didn't play much. You know, I was known just to kind of be a shooter and. Uh, it was tougher, you know, as I got older, because a lot of people started to realize that, that that's what I did, and I had to adjust my game to get inside a little more. But then I came here and just went back to shooting, and I, you know, I have no problem staying out there and launching threes. That's that's no problem. Well, uh, yeah, you definitely are pretty strong from the arc now. And uh, let's talk about your last game. You led the uh, the team in points, and from the arc, you had uh, seven of 16 three pointers. You had 11 of 22 from the field and uh, field goal attempts. Now that was your career high, 30 points. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your career high before this game? Um, I'm not sure. I think I, I said it the first game against Delaware Valley. I think I had 27, and then I had 26 a couple times my freshman year. But um, I just think that I, uh, I got hot early, and that helped me, you know, to be able to keep going and get hot later on in the game. And uh, it helped me keep, keep, uh, keep my tempo and keep pressing on with my three. Now, uh, you're not one of the actual starters on the team, but uh, coming off the bench, you average more points than minutes played mm -hmm. with uh, just over 20 a game. Uh, do you feel that uh, Coach Ondeko's uh, complete line change, how he just, you know, all five pretty much come in, does that affect your game at all? No, not really, because, you know, when you're on the bench, you get to get a feel for the game and what's going on and see what's happening and then get in and, you know, find your way through it. And uh, he splits us up into two groups, which is, you know, good, because me and Mark are the two main three-point shooters, and he splits us up so we each get a, you know, a good amount of shots for the team. And I think it works out for us. I think it helps us uh, get a rhythm in the game and keep going with the group we're in. Okay. Now, uh, you also play another sport. You also play baseball. Mm -hmm. Now, rumor has it you might not play this year. Is that, uh, is that true? Uh, I'm not going to say anything right now. I still have a decision to make. Uh, I love baseball. I've been playing it all my life. Um, we'll just have to see what happens once, once basketball ends and see what I feel. Now, for you out there who don't know, uh, Craig is... Uh, is a pitcher for the uh, the Titans, and uh, they did pretty good. You you were on the Pac Championship team, correct? right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So uh, now, do you find it difficult to uh, be you know having your school work and having uh, two two uh, sports? Yeah. Last year, I found it a little bit difficult to balance both out because uh, baseball, especially, you're playing a doubleheader every night, and you know you might be away and not get back to late. You know, with basketball anyway, we were back kind of you know, at a good time. A lot of games were you know set, but baseball, you never know with rain outs and. Might have three. We had three games one time. We were joking the other day about having three games in one day, and it was that's that, that's one reason why I might not be coming back to play baseball just because of the, the the balance. Now uh, you were saying now you have two different squads almost on the mm -hmm. team, and your team's fairly close. I was riding the bus with you guys, and you guys seem very very close together. Now, 
what would your teammates think of you as what role do you play in the team? Like, there's always, you know, the dad role and the, mm. you know, the joker and stuff like that. But what, what role would you play? Well, I'm definitely not the joker because Mark DeMonica takes that over. He, that. he doesn't leave anybody alone. And then you can't say anything to him and he gets real mad at you. But Mark's definitely the joker. I, I'm kind of quiet. I kind of, the shy you know, guy. Yeah, I kind of mix it with everybody. I kind of keep to myself because once someone starts getting on me and joking with me, I kind of held my own shell and I'm just, uh, you know, enough of that. But uh, I kind of just sit back and relax and let everything come to me. Well, uh, thanks for uh, being on the show. No, Truly no appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you again uh, coming up next week uh, with your game. And uh, for that, that's it for right now. We're going to come back after this commercial break with Coach Ondeco. <laughs> Crackhead, drug dealer, gang member, all kicked out of the community with the help of kids like me. Me. You can help prevent crime. Call 1-800-722-TEENS to find out how. It's time we're judged by what we do. Not how we look. Everybody, this is Tim McGraw for Rad, recording artists, actors, and athletes against drunk driving. You know, I spend a lot of time on the road and I see some funny things out there, but one thing that's not so funny is someone who's about to drive drunk. So take the keys and be a friend, because friends don't let friends drive drunk. I wasn't going to school because I was making money stealing cars. Well, I was Tim when I first got involved with drugs. I skipped school because, you know, nobody cared. When I first got pregnant, school was not important to me, so I dropped out. Well, if I don't finish school, then I can't go to college. I mean, that's the whole point of what I want to do with my life. I still need to go to school to make, make it for myself. I think I'm happier now. I know I'm happier now. And welcome back to Coach Corner. Now to the left of me here, I have Coach Larry Ondeco. Now, uh, this is the ringmaster of the circus here, uh, the head's head men's basketball coach. Uh, now, Coach, this is uh, your third year as head coach here at Westminster for the Titans. You've really established that run-and-gun uh, uh, style, averaging 118 points per game, and uh, very fa fast pace. That's why we even call it the circus. Now, uh, your team last year was ranked uh, second in the nation in three-pointers per game, then ranked third in the uh, this NCAA Double A Division Three in scoring total. Now uh, let's talk about your roster here. Uh, first, let's look at the injuries. Uh, Dom Joseph was out. Uh, could you say anything about him? Why uh, he's out, or what's wrong with him? Uh, yeah, he's got a he got an infection in the lining of his heart uh, about three weeks before the season started, and um, he's going to be out for the whole year. Uh, okay. So um, he's set certainly a big loss for us because he did so many things. And, uh, you know, we go from having three seniors to two seniors yeah. and uh, no juniors. So we're a very young team, and that loss, uh, you know, it certainly hurts us early in the year. Um, he, that, he, that's where, I mean, Dom would be a big help all year. But yeah. uh, here in the beginning, while these kids are just getting their feet under their ground, that's where you look for your seniors. And, um, you know, that's where he'd be our big help right now, and we're certainly missing him. Now, is there any chance of him maybe red shirting and coming back at all next year? Or? Oh, yeah, he's, uh, he'll definitely have that opportunity, and he's already talked about that. So, so we'll see if we can get uh, one more year on him. Now, is there any other injuries on your team at all? Other than that, look pretty healthy. No, we're doing fine, and uh, we're really lucky in that aspect because uh, with this young team, we kind of need everybody uh, that we have. So, yeah, we've been pretty healthy. Now, you already kind of said this a little bit now, but uh, at the PAC Media Day, you said your team was very, very young. <coughs> uh, like you said, three seniors now down to two, and uh, eight sophomores, five freshmen. And uh, having a young team like this can be difficult, I'm, I'm sure of it. But uh, how does this affect your team, having uh, so, so many young guys? Well, it's, it's difficult on, I think, if you look at the PAC, uh, standings all the teams are that way you know um, no one's winning and it's not because they're terrible it's because they're all young you know Grove City hasn't won a game yet but they lost their four of their five starters uh, Teal's lost their point guard which is always very hard to do um, so you got a bunch of young teams out there uh, struggling to learn things and you're learning it in game situations so uh, our kids are doing a pretty good job but they're just not getting enough things done but uh, the nice thing is is that uh, you know, freshmen and sophomores become, you know, juniors and seniors, seniors. and eventually they're going to have this town, and, I, and I'm, I'm excited about our future. Future, absolutely. Now, uh, you actually have two of your freshmen, I believe, that were starting. Uh, could you maybe say a little bit something about your freshmen at all? 
Well, yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're, first of all, they're good players, but they're our biggest kids. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we haven't had many big kids in the past two years. And, um, you know, Steven Bielix, uh, uh, a really nice size kid and a very good player. And Ryan Ricketts gives us a little bit of strength down inside and uh, has done a nice job. But they've all got a lot, of, lot to learn. Lot to learn and, um, you know, our, our depth is more at our, um, at our guard spot. But, you know, that's the main reason they're getting out there is to uh, send a little bit of size out there early in the game. Now, uh, yeah, so two of your stars are freshmen. That doesn't really matter, though, because when you uh, do your line changes, uh, I mean, it, it's, the, it's all or nothing, pretty much. Uh, what's your, kind of your theory behind that, or could you explain that a little bit? Well, the, the theory behind it is, is that you, you hope to play as hard as you can, and if you're going to press and run the way we are and you're going to do it at full speed, uh, you know, about 20 to between 20 and 22 minutes should be about the extent that you can play. Unfortunately, right now, our depth is uh, such that we don't have – uh, you know, when we go from Stephen Bielik, we go from 6'8 to, you know, just, or Jake Zaychok at 6'5. So, you know, through recruiting and building your team, hopefully uh, within the next year we'll be able to go from 6'8 to 6'8 and, uh, and uh, not have much of a drop off in size or talent. And, uh, you know, we're just building that through our program. Yeah, hopefully, uh, not that DeMonica's not a bad player, but I mean, he is short. Hopefully we don't get any more of those in the future. But uh, let's start talking about your game Tuesday. Played Penn State Barron for the second <coughs> time uh, this year. Uh, Barron jumped off with an early six-point <coughs> lead in the game uh, with eight minutes left uh, to play. You guys rallied back, uh, made a comeback, came within four at the half. What kind of uh, halftime adjustments did you make during that game? Well, our big thing has just been our turnovers. You know, uh, um, we had 21 of them, they had 24, and we try and get a big differential there. And I think last year with our team with more experience, uh, when we made our run, it was always to get ahead. And now we're making our runs to get back in the game. We got down 30 to 14. And when Craig got hot and made our big run, it was only to get it right back to about even. So uh, we just need to learn to stay in the game a little longer so that when we make our run, it's to get us a lead. And we've just not been able to get a lead. And uh, that's your difficult thing, especially when you're dealing with young kids. Now, uh, you were kind of in the same situation Coach Scott was in in the fact that uh, your, the assistant coach for the other team was actually a former player. Now, uh, we have Pat O'Connor up there. Uh, I mean, great senior they had last year. They made the 1,000-point mark. How does it feel to, <coughs> to coach against uh, one of your former players? Well, it's uh, um, once the game get going, you kind of forget about it, and it's not like he's the head coach. I'm sure it would be a, a lot more difficult if he was the head coach, but um, I'm just happy for Pat. Um, he's got a nice situation. He's working for a great guy in Coach Nyland, a, a very good school and a good program. He's going to learn a lot. He's helping them out, and he's got his career rolling. So I'm, I'm, I'm just excited for him. Oh, very well. Well, thanks again for uh, being on the show, Coach. Truly really appreciate it. And uh, your guys' next game will be up at Allegheny. You'll travel on December 7th. That game starts at 730 for a tip-off. And uh, thanks for watching the show. Uh, coming up next is going to be the county line. I'm Justin Egley. Thanks again for Coach Ondeco, Coach Scott, and Craig Hanna for coming in, and for Steve Brink, Pack Report. We'll see you next time.